Good morning. This week, I'm taking you to the gym with me every single day. Should be six days, and then uh, I usually like to take at least one day off a week, sometimes two, depending on the schedule. But given that today is Monday, and there's not a ton, ton, ton that is getting done this week, I'm gonna do my best to bring you with me every single day. It might be a bit much, and it's a big step in our relationship, but let's do it anyway. Today being Monday, it is, I don't know, I think it's always good to start with your weaknesses. And my weakness over the past couple of years has been my shoulders. So today we're gonna train shoulders. Recently I've started hitting every muscle group twice during the week, and I think I like it better than just doing a generic bro style split when it's you know one muscle group per day and then six days to recover. I don't think I need that much time to recover because I take care of myself well in other ways. I don't go outside in 90 something degree weather like all of these people. I get good sleep, I have a good diet, I'm always well hydrated, so I, I don't think I need all that time and I don't think most people need all that time. Beauty of my gym is it's less than a mile from my house, so let's go, uh, let's go train some shoulders. Well, shoulders and back. I start with cable lateral raises. I like to start with the cables because it gives me a steady resistance profile throughout the entirety of the exercise. I'm supposed to do it with both arms at the same time, but this gym doesn't have that machine. Then right after that into essentially the same movement, but for the rear delts. Again, it's supposed to be doing it at the same time, but the gym doesn't have a machine, so you make do and whatever the gym has, you use. From here, we go on to probably one of my least favorite exercises, the overhead press. For a lot of people, it's their favorite, but since it's a stark weakness of mine, I don't like it, but you still gotta do it anyway. I like to pre-fatigue the other parts of my shoulders just so I can make sure I get more anterior deltoid versus lateral delts. Speaking of which, we move back onto the lateral raises, the second lateral delt exercise. You'll notice that I have my chest supported so that I don't swing and cheat and actually not use my shoulders and just use my whole body's momentum. At the end, you get pretty tired. Moving on to back, this is a staple of mine over the last couple of months, the chest supported rows. One of the keys here, especially on this workout, is I don't need to get my elbow behind me because that's not what the back does. And you can see my face gets very red with this exercise. And then we finish off with probably my favorite exercise, the low row. I don't know why this is my favorite exercise, probably because I like lifting very heavy weights. But again, you can see my elbow doesn't get behind me, it gets aligned with my back where it's supposed to go. I've never been one to be particularly sore after a workout, and today is not really any different. Yesterday's shoulders, my shoulders feel great. I was able to move some junk from the garage to by the side of the road, no problem. As I mentioned, I like to train everything at least twice a week, so on shoulder day I hit a couple of back exercises, which back I would argue is my strength, so I want to bring up my weaknesses. It's you can't just ignore your strength, so you gotta train those two. But enough of that rambling, it is time for my least favorite day of the week. It is arm day. A lot of you thought I was gonna say leg day, but no. Arm day for me means supersets. I start with this dumbbell preacher curl on the incline bench with a super high incline because, frankly, I don't swing the entirety of my body and I get to focus just on my bicep as much as I don't enjoy doing it. But right after I do one set of that, I move on to the cable and do some cable extensions. I like this particular variation because it forces me to stabilize my entire body, especially my upper body, while maintaining the appropriate contraction of the tricep. Good exercise. After three of those sets, I move on to incline cable curls. They're called incline because you're supposed to do it on a incline bench with your elbow behind you, but since I have my elbow behind me anyway, we call them about the same. Again, love the cables because it maintains a constant pressure throughout the entire range of motion, and we superset that with weighted dips. Unfortunately, this gym doesn't have a belt that I could put this around, so the heavy dumbbells on my calves gets a little uncomfortable after a while, but nothing too egregious and dire. And the final superset, we start with hammer curls. You'll notice that my elbow is kind of far away from my body at this point. That's just how my anatomy works. Everyone else is a little bit different, but you gotta find what works for you and what actually trains the muscle group as opposed to just going through the motions. Final superset is these overhead extensions. These are usually done 15 to 20 repetitions, but I like to do it nice and slow because again, arms are a weakness of mine, so I wanna make sure that my time under tension is really, really high. 
After arms, we go straight into legs. First exercise is hip extensions. This is an exercise I do many times per week, and depending on how I adjust my head and my back, I can focus today on using my hamstrings to pick me up instead of my lower back. From there, we move into a Smith machine squat. I recently started doing these. I really like them for quad work. My feet are placed very far in front of me so that there's really not a whole lot of hamstring involved in the compound movement. From there, we go into lying hamstring curls to try to separate the front and the back. So when I'm doing hamstrings here, my quads are recovering. In the previous one, I was focusing on quads, so my hamstrings were recovering, just to make sure I can still be strong throughout the entirety of my workout. From there, we are doing split squats. Heavy split squats, I know, but split squats nonetheless, they are a least favorite activity for most people. For me, I actually like them just because I am good at them. And from here, we will finish with a leg press. You'll notice my feet are kind of low on the plate. That's because quads are weakness of mine compared to my hamstrings, so I want to be a bit more quad focused, but this is generally for a lot of reps, 15, 20, or maybe even more. And this is just to make sure I'm particularly exhausted. Oh, I knew that was going to be the kiss of death. Like once you say you don't get sore after workout, the next day. The day after I trained arms was two days after I trained shoulders, and I went to take the blankets off of me in the morning and my shoulder said, nope. Sometimes I like getting sore after a workout because it reminds me that like I had a workout, but at the same time, it's important for most of us to remember that just because you are or are not sore after a workout doesn't mean that workout was particularly good or particularly bad. It's a whole number of reasons that you could be sore or not sore after a workout. It could just be who you are. Maybe you're dehydrated. Maybe you're just nutritionally deficient somehow. Maybe you got trash sleep, who knows? There's a lot of reasons, but good workout versus not good workout is usually not, not what it is. It's the middle of August in South Florida, so I'm probably bordering on dehydration. That being said, I have two 30 ounce Yeti Ramblers on my desk. Both filled with, I think one of them is an electrolyte drink and the other one is just sparkling water. So that is probably not the cause. What I will tell you though is since moving to Florida, Generally, my sleep has been quite a bit better. I've been sleeping longer, I've been sleeping better, but over the last week and a half, it's been not as good. It'll get better. All right, enough rambling. Time to get back to the gym. For shoulders, chest, and biceps, I told you you'd see this one again. This is the lateral raise with my chest supported. I'm starting with this one this time. I'm a little bit stronger. The weight's moving a little bit better, even though my face does not look like I'm feeling stronger. From here, we move into the pec deck. We're doing the rear delts this time. It's essentially the same thing that we did with the cables earlier in the week, but this is a much more stable platform so you can put on more weight and just use the guidance of the actual machine. I like starting with shoulders on days like this because when you move into chest, it's easy to use your shoulders if they're not already tired. But since my shoulders are already pre-fatigued, when I do these incline dumbbell presses, it's chest, almost only. There's a little bit of anterior delt in there too, but it's mostly just chest. Moving from there, we go to the pec deck flies. This machine uh, gives me fits, as you can see when you're just looking at it, because when I go to the center, it sometimes rattles. And it's a little disconcerting, but as long as I can get a good squeeze and a good pump, I'm happy. From here, we'll move into the machine chest press. This one is a little bit unstable, but I kind of like it because it forces me to concentrate a little bit. For me, towards the end of the workout, it's easy to go through the motions, but if I'm forced to concentrate because the machine's wobbly, it will always help. And we'll finish off with cable curls. I like to hit everything twice a week, like I said. It doesn't have to be the most painful workout for every particular muscle group, but just to make sure that I'm straining it at least twice per week. So as we embark on day five of my lifting week, I should let you know that I did something very stupid yesterday. Before I trained yesterday, I ran. And I can't tell you how much I don't like running, but I did it anyway. I got the idea because frankly, I got the idea for a piece of content to do. And I posted that real, um, depends on when you're looking at this, but as of right this second, I posted it yesterday. Today, I am far more tired, far more hungry than I had been in a long time. It could be also that I didn't get great sleep last night again, just because I was so exhausted, but my calves are killing me. I guess kind of luckily today is back day. As far as all the muscle groups are concerned, back is probably my strongest, or at least I think it is. So it's always a little bit more fun to, I don't know, stroke the ego a bit. But 
before I fall back asleep, let's go back to the gym. And we have back and triceps today, starting out with the good old chest supported rows. Again, elbow goes to extension and then even with the back at the end of the set, I get very red again and it becomes very, very heavy. Then we move into the cable high row. This has been popular on the internet for a while and I really, really like it. It gets a great contraction. Again, elbow goes to the back because there are different fibers in your back that go in different directions. So here we hit a different angle. Then into my favorite, the low row. Again, I'm not sure why it's my favorite. Maybe because it's most strength of mine. Maybe it's because it's most comfortable to train. Again, don't know, but good stretch to start and then pulling the elbow directly to the back. From here, we're doing something called rack pulls. This is a body weight exercise that I like to do it with body weight, just so I can make sure I get my 10 to 15 reps at least. If I get stronger and 15 reps is now a joke, then I'll start putting weight on myself, but this is more for just endurance training. Then I move into Smith Machine Shrugs. This is more of a new exercise that I've implemented. I have pretty good traps, but again, you shouldn't ignore them even if they are a strength of yours. The pause at the top is what really gets me followed by, again, tried and true back extensions. This time I am focused on using my lower back instead of my glutes and my hamstrings. You'll notice that my upper back is just rounded a little bit more than in previous leg workouts, just so I can hit that lower back. And finally, some triceps extensions just to hit the triceps for the second time this week. Sure, you're gonna get some tricep work when you work chest and shoulders, but not dedicated tricep work like we're doing here with everything stable and just using the triceps. And from here, we'll jump into our last lift of the week with legs, hip extensions. You'll notice my head is a little bit higher, my back is a little bit straighter so I can focus on my hamstring and my glutes to fatigue the posterior chain before jumping into probably my least favorite exercise on the planet, heel elevated safety bar squats. Again, since I ran, my legs were just not having it today. This is my third set and I was feeling particularly weak, but you know what? Sometimes you have stronger days than others and that's okay and that's normal. From there, I move into leg extensions. I like to pause at the top of this exercise, frankly, because the weight stack is not heavy enough to make me struggle for 12 to 15 repetitions without the pause. So the pause makes me just hold it and fatigues me much more efficiently. Then we've got split squats with an elevated front foot. I like using this exercise and going much more quickly, as you can see, for a power movement, as opposed to previously when I did it, that was quite a bit slower, not really power, more for strength, but I'm going pretty quick. This is a power movement. And last but not least, we finish off the week with lying hamstring curls. I did some hamstrings earlier in the workout with the hip extensions, but just to make sure I hit them one more time, just to make sure they're good and worked. And you can see that I'm pausing here, so yep, I was tired. And there you have it, there it is, a full week of training. I will leave you with two things before I get out of this video. Number one, you don't have to do everything exactly as I do it. It's been a long time since I actually stuck with the program for more than like three weeks, just out of boredom. Muscle confusion is not really a thing. Your muscle doesn't know what you're doing. It just knows that it's being used. But since I've stuck with this program for, I think I'm on week seven or eight now, I can definitely start to see the benefits of staying with the one thing for a long period of time, like at least two or three months before changing it up because yeah, it gets stale after a while. But just because I train the way I do doesn't mean that you absolutely have to. Will it help you? Probably, but not if you hate it. I made this video because people want to know what I do in the gym. Here you go. And the second thing I'll leave you with is, I've said this before and I'll say it a million more times, the gym is only one of three cohesive parts of an overall picture of health, fitness, and well-being, the other two being nutrition and recovery. Sure, exercise has tons of benefits that have nothing to do with weight loss, nothing to do with fat loss, but if you're not prioritizing your nutrition and your recovery at the same time, you're leaving a lot of benefits on the table. So remember, this is what I have been doing. This is what I enjoy doing. Some exercises I enjoy more than others, but that, that's whatever. And it doesn't mean that you also have to enjoy exactly what I do to find any sort of benefit while exercising. And secondly, if you ignore your nutrition and your recovery, you're leaving a lot on the table and I would just hate to see that happen to anybody. Thanks for watching. If you wanna see something else, something new, something different, leave in the comments below, I'll get to them. And I'll see you in the next video.